This is ABC 15 mornings. Right now at six lawmakers in the White House reaching a deal finally on a coronavirus relief bill, and this is the biggest stimulus package in modern American history. So what's in it? And the number of coronavirus cases continues to surge in our state as we learn that 15 students from ASU have tested positive. Meantime, we say good morning to you on a busy Wednesday. It's hump day. You made it to the middle of the week. Thanks for joining us at 6. I'm Nick Saletti. And I'm Kaylee O'Kelly. We do want to check in with our meteorologist Iris Emerson for a look at our forecast. Good morning. Hey, good morning, guys. We're just plugging along here on this Wednesday morning. We are starting the day with some more clouds as you look at satellite clouds and radar with me. The clouds mainly in northern and western Arizona, but a few of those clouds drifting into the valley too here at this hour, mainly the West Valley and the Northwest Valley. They're thin, high clouds, but you can expect more of these clouds as the day goes on. Now, temperatures this morning off to a cool start. In case you're working from home today, you can open up the windows, let that cool air in, but know that it is a little chilly in some spots, a few 40s out there, but Phoenix down to 56 degrees right now. By lunchtime, maybe you'll grab lunch on your patio, 73 degrees and a quick warm up with a high today all the way up to 79 degrees. Now you will see more clouds this afternoon into this evening. It'll be mostly cloudy, but it's staying dry. Occasional breezes too. And again, highs in the upper seventies. But after today, we see a big temperature drop. We'll go from 79 today down to just 69 for a high on Thursday, 67 on Friday. So it's getting cooler. We'll talk about what our latest rain chances look like in that seven day forecast up ahead. Iris, thank you. Meantime, six deaths and 326 cases of the coronavirus. That number rising daily in Arizona as more people get tested. The latest death coming from Coconino County. We're told a man in his 50s with underlying health conditions is the one who passed away. And it comes as the worldwide number of cases tops 400,000. Just yesterday, we told you Johns Hopkins University reported 384,000 cases. But this morning, that number is up to 423,000. The number of deaths pushing 19,000. Arizona State University confirming now 15 students have tested positive for coronavirus. Our Nohelani Grab joining us live in Tempe, and some of these students, Nohe, did recently travel to New York. They did, Kaylee. They were part of an arts program and they had been in New York about two weeks ago. And of course, New York, as we know, is one of the epicenters of the outbreak here in the United States of more than 2,800 people sick in New York City. So the students were given the option to return early and they started feeling symptoms and now some of them are awaiting their test results. In the meantime, a lot of people are still looking ahead at college graduation, waiting to see what ASU is going to decide to do. Right now, ASU's spring commencement is still scheduled for the second week of May, even though all other universities in the state have made decisions to cancel their commencement ceremonies. The university telling ABC 15, though, that they don't plan on making a decision about ASU's graduation until 30 days out. I can't believe that they're not making this decision now. We need to get a grip. We need to be united. Even Arizona's Attorney General Mark Burnovich weighing in on Twitter saying that he is deeply concerned and asking why weren't campus facilities closed sooner. He says ASU needs to release more information to the public now. Now, Northern Arizona University has decided to cancel its graduation ceremonies, but Kaylee and Nick, they've decided that they're going to try and work on a virtual option. So if, they ab if they're able to figure that out, then we'll let you know what they decide to do. All right. Yeah, so many trailblazers right now, just as we try to all figure all of this out together collectively. No, hey, thank you. We have also confirmed an employee on the State Farm campus in Tempe has tested positive. This was in Building 4, which is now shut down, undergoing massive cleaning. We're told the campus, where about 7,500 people work, was already transitioning to working from home. This morning, you're waking up to a stimulus deal. The Senate agreeing late last night on the package they say will help Americans during this pandemic while stabilizing small businesses. Our Mark Thompson is in studio right now. It's a $2 trillion package and it did take days of negotiations. Yeah, Nick and Kaylee, good morning. This stimulus package is huge and historic. And we told you lawmakers they have spent the past five days discussing this bill to help workers, businesses and the health care system during this pandemic. And just after midnight this morning, a deal was reached. It's good news for the doctors and nurses in emergency rooms around the country who are waiting for more masks more funding. It's good news for families all across America. 
at $2 trillion. This is one of the most expensive and far-reaching deals ever made in Congress. Now, here's a breakdown of the numbers. $250 billion for direct payments to individuals and families and $350 billion in small business loans. There's also $250 billion in unemployment benefits and $500 billion for business loans. We're going to take up and pass this package to care for those who are now caring for us and help carry millions of Americans through these dark economic times. And Nick and Kaylee, Majority Leader McConnell says that the Senate will move to pass this legislation coming up today. And I know we're watching the markets. They're, they look like they're going to open in positive territory, probably as a result of this. Yeah, and it looks that way, but we're going to keep an eye yeah. on it because we know any, any other news that comes out could affect that as well. All right, yeah. Mark Thompson, good to have you back. All right, good thank news. you. Some good news. Thanks, Mark. Uh, meantime, let's talk about this. The state is seeing higher applications for unemployment. A lot of people trying to cope with this new reality that they have. So we spoke to a woman who had to apply for unemployment benefits for the first time. She worked at a server at a restaurant at Sky Harbor. She said even with this unemployment assistance, it wouldn't be enough to pay her bills or take care of her three-year-old daughter. It's been really stressful just trying to figure out what I'm going to do as far as paying any of my bills or not knowing when my job is coming back and knowing that there's no restaurant I can just go and find a new job at quickly. So we're told she has applied for a job at a local grocery store. A lot of big chains are hiring right now. We've posted that information for you on ABC15.com. Well, I'm Judge DeVici live at the state capitol and with so much uncertainty about the economy right now, the governor's office is now issuing an executive order when it comes to housing. Governor Doug Ducey is delaying evictions for renters. Let's break this all down for you. In this executive order, it calls for landlords to delay evictions for the next 120 days. Now, in a news release, the governor's office is also reminding residents that the State Department of Housing does offer a Save Our Homes program that could help some people People with mortgage payments. Now, the order comes as over 2,000 Phoenix renters are now facing eviction, and that number is expected to climb significantly over the next few months. Now, the governor's office gave us this statement. It reads, quote, this order is about protecting public health and providing relief to families impacted by this virus, whether through sickness or economic hardship. This is the right thing to do to support Arizona families, end quote. Now, county courts have also been working with local justices of the peace already to delay evictions. And we do want to remind you again that the Arizona Department of Housing does offer a free hotline and that can all help if you're struggling to either make rent payments or housing payments. Guys. All right. Our John Genovese live at the state capitol this morning. Thank you for the insight. We appreciate that. And with more than a million students home until at least April 10th, starting next week, schools across Arizona are going to serve as student enrichment centers. What does it mean? They're going to offer free child care and meal services for families in law enforcement, health care or public sector jobs like child safety. We're told the centers are going to follow CDC guidelines as well on cleaning and social distancing and that teachers and volunteers will be helping with staffing. In other cases, it could be community members, but for those types of volunteers, we would ask, we, we would require that they go through a background check before they're working with children. No word yet on exact locations, eligibility and capacity, but here's what we do know. Districts are targeting schools located near hospitals. In other news, a toddler is recovering this morning after accidentally shooting himself. This happened near 43rd Avenue in Glendale. We're told the three year old boy got a hold of his parents gun. No word yet if anyone will face charges for this. 10 past the hour overnight, a group of neighbors taking a suspect down who was trying to carjack them. We're told this happened near 75th Avenue in McDowell. We're told the suspect tried to uh, carjack two vehicles. He wasn't successful, so he fired shots at one of these cars and then went to a nearby neighborhood and tried to steal even more cars. Police say that's when neighbors tackled him to the ground and took away his gun. He was arrested. Thankfully, nobody was hurt. We are learning more about a man arrested in Chandler yesterday morning. Police say he fired several shots with an AR-15 from inside his apartment near McQueen and Chandler. A witness telling us exactly what she heard. You guys, they are letting off rounds for rounds for the last five minutes. You know, when you're recording, you're not actually thinking you're going to catch these gunshots, it's always that late react reaction. So when I caught, my heart was beating. 
so fast. Uh, I mean, I, you just start thinking about, is that a family member? Um, I, I have cousins and my aunt live in that area. So it, it was it was pretty scary. And we're glad she's okay as well, but you could see some of the damage here to some of those patrol cars there in the East Valley. Still ahead on ABC 15 Morning, hospitals are enforcing no visitor policies, helping to keep everyone safe. Ahead, how a local doctor is working to make it easier for loved ones to still stay in touch. And this morning, the Waffle House Index going into the red. It's not a good thing. We're going to talk about why, because the restaurant, it's the one that can withstand hurricanes and flooding, but they are closing shop temporarily. Hey, good morning. I'm meteorologist Iris Hermosillo. We are tracking your most accurate forecast. And as you start your day, your Wednesday temperature is a little cool here in the valley, waking up to 56 degrees officially in Phoenix to our north down into the mid 30s in Flagstaff, just a few degrees above freezing. It's 46 in Sedona, down to 41 in Payson, 45 in Prescott, and waking up to 50s and 60s in spots like Bullhead City and Lake Havasu. Across the valley, I'm seeing a few spots in the 40s. And now we've added Gilbert. You are down to 48 degrees. Apache Junction, You've cooled another degree, and Levine, you're down to 49 degrees. It's 50 in Deer Valley, 50 in Cave Creek, and surprise, checking in at 53 degrees. Peoria, you're right there, too. Now, I keep telling you about these clouds that we're seeing, and now that the sun is coming up, we're starting to get a better view of those clouds as we look live with our South Mountain camera. A lot of high clouds out there, especially as you look to the north and to the West Valley, but we're not seeing any rain this morning, and we will not see any rain in the valley or across the state today, and that's exactly what you're going to see here on Futurecast. We're waking up to those clouds clouds, especially to our west and north, but we're not going to, we're not seeing any rain now. And today will be a dry day. So as you look at future casts, you can expect to see more of these clouds as we get into this afternoon and into this evening. It'll be mostly cloudy in the valley. These clouds are moving in ahead of a storm system that arrives Thursday into Friday. So that's why we're seeing the clouds. But again, today, I think it's still dry and warm. We are going to start to feel some breezes that are a little stronger, especially in northern Arizona. And that's what you're going to see here as I fast forward through future casts. You're going to notice that by a about 10 a.m., it starts to get breezy in northern Arizona. And in the valley, by this evening, we're going to get some occasional breezes between about 5 and 15 miles an hour. But tomorrow, those winds get even stronger. Tomorrow, we also start to bump up those rain chances and those snow chances start to go up for the high country. So this storm system, I can tell you, with each model run, it's looking drier and drier. So our rainfall potential is not very high for the valley. And at this point, it looks like it's going to favor our north and northeast valley foothills. And any rain that we do get will be very light. Maybe just a few hundredths of an inch. Now, we'll keep that chance for rain in the forecast tomorrow and Friday. And for northern Arizona, those snow levels dropping to around 4,500 feet by Friday, but snowfall amounts also look light with this. Maybe one to two inches of snow in spots like Flagstaff. Just know that that could still lead to some slick driving conditions. And again, winds will be the big part of this, and so will the cooler temperatures. Today, warm and warmer than yesterday as we top out at 79 degrees. So despite those increasing clouds, we'll reach 79 right around four o'clock and we'll likely start to see those 70s by as early as 11 o'clock this morning. Our 30 year average is 79. So we're right near the average today with those high temperatures in the upper 70s across the valley, low 50s in spots like Flagstaff, upper 50s in Prescott. But tomorrow, check out the seven day forecast. It's gonna be 10 degrees cooler than today. And Friday, still in the upper 60s, more sunshine with a slight chance for rain. The weekend looks drier and warmer and then we're talking 80s next week with 86 for a high by Tuesday. Iris, thank you. Let's get to your top stories. As the coronavirus spreads, so do crimes related to it, like thieves stealing surgical masks to sell and scammers trying to peddle cures that don't exist. The Justice Department says anyone threatening to spread COVID-19 can also be charged under a terrorism offense. Spain now has the world's second highest death toll from the coronavirus. New for you this morning, the country recording another 738 deaths. That's the highest reported in one day. Spain has now surpassed China when it comes to total number of deaths. This morning, we've learned that Prince Charles has tested positive for the coronavirus. According to a statement from his office, a 71 year old has shown mild symptoms, but is in otherwise good health. His wife, Camilla Parker Bowles, Duchess of Cornwall, has so far tested negative. We're told he's in isolation in Scots, uh, Scottsdale, excuse me, Scotland. There we go. Waffle House is closing more than 350 of its locations due to the coronavirus. The 24 hour diners are famous for staying open during disasters, even hurricanes. Emergency officials have incorporated Waffle House's ability to serve food as a way to measure how severe a situation is. Waffle House still has more than 1600 locations that will remain open.
Well, there's a new warning you need to know about this morning. If you are seeing info about at home coronavirus testing kits, it's fake. The Food and Drug Administration warning that kits are being sold as at home coronavirus tests. Right now, there isn't an approved home version of the test. The FDA says they've issued warning letters to several companies promoting these fake kits. Right now, the only way to get one is from your health care provider. When you're at the grocery store, do not be surprised if you see workers wearing masks. They might also be behind plexiglass shields. Kroger, the parent company of Fry's, asking the feds now to provide protective gear for their employees. Some stores are even putting plexiglass there at the registers. Also putting floor decals all to encourage safe social distancing. And as the coronavirus spreads, misinformation is spreading along with it. Now one Arizona doctor is working to close the gap deploying uh, our technology as rapidly as possible, um, as we all hear about in the news. Dr. Randall Porter is a neurosurgeon here in Arizona. He created an app called Medical Memory. Father uh, had cancer. Porter says when he would ask his dad details about his doctor visits, he could only remember a fraction of what he'd been told. If I'm going to tell my father to record the doctor, which might scare him a little bit. Why aren't I offering that? The app gives providers a way to record doctor patient visits that can then be shared with family and friends. And the coronavirus has hospitals banning visitors. I did a brain surgery yesterday on a lady with a blood clot in her head. She's 60 years old and they wouldn't even still wouldn't let her husband come in, be at the bedside or be with her in the ICU. So they're being extremely restrictive. That's when Porter saw an opportunity to use his app in a new way. The nurse and or the doctor are going to leave a one way update video message for the family. And this will hopefully improve and bridge that communication gap that we're experiencing given the limitation of visitors. Any doctor can download it and start using it for free. We're going to figure out the economics later. If we gave it for free for this whole month, we don't care. Dr. Porter plans to offer this app for free for at least the next several weeks. Well, Arizona is not under a stay at home mandate, even though there are some restrictions in place, of course. And the Phoenix Fire Department wants you to know that they are here for you and they are still on the job. Our primary concern is the safety and welfare of the community that we so proudly serve. And although many of you have had to change your daily routine in an effort to stay well, please know that we will continue your calls for service. Good to see her there. She goes on to say that they are doing everything they can to protect our first responders. And the chief ends her message by thanking those on the front lines, and we thank them as well. Well, this guy, he says he's not a price gouger, but it's what he's selling that has our Let Joe Know team really concerned. It's a warning about secondhand sales during this public health crisis. We're open Arizona. That's what many local restaurants and contributors want you to know. Like this labor of love. McClendon Select is a family owned farm of certified organic fruits and vegetables that normally they go to restaurants throughout our state. But with more businesses closing, McClendon's is creating grab and go boxes. There are three prices here. They're priced at 50, 70 or $90. Dates and pickup locations are updated every week. Reservations for Saturday's pickup should open today, and they're also asking for help with a GoFundMe page. If the farm goes under, they say it will cost a fortune to make the soil organic again. And two local chefs are asking others to help feed the ones who would normally be feeding us. Chef Marissa Delgado and Chef Kelly Rogato used to work for a catering company and are cooking up and giving away to go meals to anybody uh, out of work in the food industry. Today from 3 to 8 p.m. the chefs will run meals out to cars that pull up to their relatives home in South Phoenix. They say family portions are going to be available as well. Now last week they handed out 110 containers of soup and 70 salads on the menu today. Fresh red chili chicken chilaquiles. It is first come first serve. You don't want to miss out on those. They also have a GoFundMe page right now. The women say they're going to keep hosting dinners until that runs out. Now we have all of the dates and details on how to help on our site at abc15.com open and we want to hear from you. So make sure you email us at openinaz at abc15.com. Nick and Kaylee, the response has been 
amazing yes. from people uh, with Open in Arizona. Yeah, we're, we're loving these segments that you're doing. It's so important because now more than ever, we know these businesses need help. Yeah, we yeah. talked about it. We yeah. were both waiters at, at a time. Three of us. Yeah. Yeah. Three of us were, yeah. yeah. Right, and so yeah, we, we, we understand. Yeah. And yeah. so this is the least we can do. It's Everything an opportunity to try something new. Yeah. Too. Why not? All right, thank you very Thanks, much. Allison. Boy, you know, let's give you something to plan for because this looks like so much fun. And I can tell you, I've been. It is a blast. Oh, okay. New dates for Country Thunder just announced. Organizers say the four-day music fest will now happen over Halloween weekend. That's fun. Tickets and camping reservations will be honored for the new dates. And the festival's main headliners have all confirmed that they will take the stage. That's good because, you yes. know, sometimes they can't work it out. This time they could. Hey, with movie theaters across the country closed because of the coronavirus, another major film is being delayed. Wonder Woman fans, you will have to hold on a little longer for this one. Warner Brothers announcing the sequel Wonder Woman 1984 won't hit theaters until August 14th. It was originally supposed to be released in June. Let's talk about